One thing I love about hunting is the memories. And one thing that helps keep those memories intact is the taxidermy. I enjoy hearing about each hunt. With each cape and set of horns that comes in here, comes a story with them. A few years ago, a guy by the name of Brian Martin came into my shop. We talked for hours about hunting, and that casual conversation eventually took me on one of the most memorable hunts of my life. It's always been a lifelong dream of mine to hunt Ibex. Brian Martin has made a career out of hunting. Having been a dedicated hunter all his life, he has guided professionally all over the U.S. and Canada and is now specializing in Asia. He hunts as hard for his clients as he does for himself. I've traveled before, but not like this. It was a 20-hour flight to the capital of Kyrgyzstan. I spent two days going around the city before my hunt began. It didn't take long to realize that they do things a little different over here. From riding on the public buses to shopping on the street, it was a continuous cultural shock. I was able to see government buildings, the changing of the guard. My interpreter, Zaku, told me a lot about the Kyrgyz people and their history. With our gear loaded and it all tied down, now we got a 12 hour road trip to get to Ibex camp. Kyrgyzstan is made up of over 90% mountains, so grazing areas are very limited. We saw thousands of sheep, goats and horses and cattle along the way. The next day we arrived in base camp. We refer to this camp as the Yak Shack. Because of the high elevation and no trees, the local used compressed yak dung as fuel to burn in fires. It smells just like you think it would. We met our Kirkies guides that would be coming with us on the hunt and got situated in camp. You know, I've done a lot of horseback hunting, and I'll tell you what, these horses we hunted there are pound for pound the toughest animals I've ever been on. They're small. Their equipment is not like what we use in the States. They use cinch straps made out of seat belts, rocks for curry combs. In this country, you cannot hunt it without a horse. These animals, these horses that we rode up in these mountains, I don't know how they did it. I really don't. We're hunting stuff so steep, side hill, downhill. Um, pretty incredible. But yeah, get tough or die in this country. The Best of the West is brought to you by Nosler Up Front, Sportier, Gunbroker.com, Huskama Long Range Optics, The Wild Sheep Foundation, and by LongRangeStore.com. Men Natan Dervish. Мен ат башла толу өскен ат башлык болуп. Балдардын баарын ат башлык. Акмостан 10 жылдан бери ушул арпа өрөндө ушундай базада иштеп жүрөбүз. Инна хото өткөрүп, эскидекелерди коорп, каргылдаларды коорп Аларды ушундай чет мамлекеттен келген туристтерге аттырып, чоң-чоңдорун аттырып, кичиктерин сактап койсуз кийинкиге. Кар болгондо кичине ылдый эле атып түшөт. Туристтер үчүн жеңил болот да. Негизкиси ошолорду кооруп, 
Sente avrak de oradan başlayıp Dekavurdan birinde çeyreği Bolot I'd say very close to the last bullet impact Checking the zero on our guns was the last thing we did before we saddled up and headed into the high country Brian wanted our guides to know that these guns were capable of shooting 500 yards with no problem I had the ultimate confidence in my equipment. Good food, really good. When was the last time you had that for breakfast? Um, that would be never. <laughs> I do believe this is horse meat. We've got close to a six hour trail ride um, to get to our first base camp, our spike camp. We rode down this river channel and I see this trail going up this hill. I'm thinking it's an Ibex trail or something. Next thing I know, we're going up with the horses and these horses were amazing. They're not a real tall horse, but sturdy, calm, well-mannered. The most beautiful country I've ever been in. Probably about midday we took lunch and um, they have a unique way of making lunch. They spread out a big old bisqueen and they take uh, meat, make it in slices, big old pile of bread, cheese. They just keep piling it on. We got some fat, we got some meat, we got some sardines, we got some cheese, garlic, and onions. It's like a Big Mac with two pieces of bread. So we ate our lunch and we probably didn't ride another 200 yards and our guide who was in the lead come running back on his horse and he says, Ibex, big Ibex. So we stopped, set up, set up the spot and scope. We looked at it. This thing was a shooter. It wasn't a monster, but he was in the class we were looking for. And uh, so I decided to take him. And uh, we went back, got the, our shooting rest set up, cameras going. It was uh, 485 yards. Brian's calling yardage for me. T's running the cameras. We got two cameras going. Um, we waited for uh, several minutes for this Ibex to turn broadside, and when he did, I dropped it. Tyler really wanted to have a good shot for the camera. Uh, that wasn't rushed and with great lighting and everything was there. So we decided to shoot the Ibex.
was quite a feeling. I mean, all these years I've been waiting for this Ibex hunt and um, I've always dreamed about it. So we walked down the hill to it. I gotta tell you, it was the most beautiful animal I've ever seen. The coat, the horns, I was beside myself. Thank you so much, buddy. You're welcome. You made a dream come true. You're very welcome. I appreciate it very much. Took a long time to get here, guys. Not only 54 years of age, but just to get here. We had 20 hours of travel, air travel. We had 10 hours in a vehicle. We've been riding horses for six hours. Brian called the wind and the yardage for me at uh, 485. Made a good shot. I had some amazing guides. Thank you guys very much. Hey, you're welcome. Good shooting. Uh, thank you. One shot kill. Best of the West, man. That's right. One, one and done. I will always remember this hunt for many reasons. First of all, the country we were hunting, the magnificent Ibex. You know, two years ago, this was just a talk in my shop, and now it's reality. I'll always remember this hunt and the people who made it happen. I enjoy Ibex hunting so much, I had the opportunity to extend my trip after the production crew had left. I was fortunate enough to kill a gray filly, and now I got twice the numbers. You know, to kind of sum up this hunt, it exceeded all my expectations. I didn't expect country this steep or this cold or such friendly people or mad chaos type cities, um, amazing animals. It was a hunt of a lifetime for me. I'll probably never get back at my age or, or maybe I can't. I mean, this is brutal stuff, guys. Um, but it was truly a hunt of a lifetime. I consider myself very fortunate to have the job that I do. Being a cameraman and a field producer for the best of the West is a dream job. When I got the phone call that I was going to Kyrgyzstan, I could hardly believe it. Then I was told, not only do I get to go, I get to hunt. While we finished filming Tyler's glory scene, the rest of the Kyrgyz guides went down and started putting up camp. In less than two hours, Tyler's Ibex went from in the crosshairs to in the pot. It was the end of a really great day in Kyrgyzstan. For more information about hunting in Asia with Asia Mountain Outfitters, contact Brian Martin at 250-317-5525 or visit online at www.asianmountainoutfitters.com. For more information about the products used in today's show, please go to longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. The next morning we saddled up and moved camp. Today we're hunting in an area that Dervish calls Ibex Valley. This area is very steep and the wolves seldom hunt here because of the rocky terrain and steep ledges. We rode the horses as high as we could and then started to peek over the top of every ridge. After three ridges with no ibex, Davis was positive they would be on the next ridge.
Over 2,000 yards away, the big group of ibex are dropping into the same canyon where Dervish wants to set up our camp. We stopped just short of the canyon, tied up the horses, and snuck up to see if we could spot any of the ibex. With the wind in the ibex favor, we decide to wait till morning to make our approach. What was interesting is we found many camps down this creek bed and ibex skulls. We probably saw 30 to 40 ibex skulls scattered throughout this canyon and some big ones. I mean, these ibex are dying of old age. That's how remote this area is. We saw, we saw a bunch of ibex here last night on the other side of this hill. We just saw three small ibex on the side of this hill. We're gonna sneak around and see what we can see. With only a handful of ibex still in the canyon, we get set up as fast as we can. But the moment we get the cameras and the gun positioned on the last ibex in the herd, it rounds the corner and never comes back into view. Only seconds later, Brian spots one last billy 575 yards below us. Yeah, I'm ready. T makes a shot. The billy goes over the edge. And uh, before we went down, we're waiting to see if he comes up or goes down um, to follow the other ibex that left. T gets up and he looks at the camera and, uh, of the footage and he says, what the hell is this? And I'll tell you, I, my heart sank. I thought I blew the whole shot. Well, fortunately, it was stuff prior to the actual, I got the shot, and I was very happy about that. So, yeah, I'm ready. anyway, we, know, we saw the animals hit. We split up. T and Brian and one of the guides went up high to get on the blood trail. We went in down below to have the horses ready. And um, all of a sudden, we hear on the radio. And it took probably half hour, 45 minutes, but we got a call on the radio. T's, T's Billy is down. I can't tell you how excited I was. We rode our horses down the bottom of the canyon. Good. I look up and it must be, it's so far up this rock chute and there's T with his Billy. I had to get there. It about killed me, but I could not, not miss that moment with T. And uh, I'm just very proud of him. He killed a tremendous, tremendous Billy. I would really like to give a special thanks to Brian Martin for all his efforts in making our hunts and this episode a success. I would especially like to thank the best of the West. To be able to refer to this as a day at the office is a dream come true. By the time we radioed Tyler, he was a few hundred vertical feet below us. Watching him walk all the way up to congratulate me and shake my hand was something that I will never forget.